Five Questions with Leroy Butler. Now, here's Tom Silverstein. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Five Questions with Leroy Butler. We are past week three, and there was no mm. Jordan Love Sunday, yeah. but for the second week in a row, Packers came Well, you out. didn't think that when you saw him practicing that he was going to play. I thought there was a slight chance that oh. he would play. I think it all depended on um, how he practiced, and ultimately I think they just decided nah. it was safer to keep him from that. As soon as I saw him practicing, I said, well, that's for next week and the week after. Because you got to eventually practice. You don't just – I think right. sometimes the fans think you're well, you just go out there and practice and play. You got to get him back into the rhythm of the – now, I did – I don't know the numbers, but if he had – taken, which I think he did take some first team reps, but they kick you out of practice before you know that. So, but when I saw uh, Clifford, was he going to be active and not on the practice roster? You can make what you want, but ultimately I thought that it's Malik's, it's his show for this week, and I was glad he uh, stuck to that. Yeah, um, I think it, I, I think you make a good point. Um, the Packers' practice has been to start a guy. To part of his rehab has been going back into practice. Yes. Now, I don't think that he practices a ton, but he probably goes through all the individual drills and everything else. And we don't yeah. know how much eleven on eleven he took. Yes. Whether, if he took any. Yes. But um, I think that yeah, they used that week to um, you know. Work him out, and then if he, you know, showed miraculous recovery, they could have played him if, yeah. if they thought he was like, oh, well, man, he's moving really well and everything yes. like that. But um, you know, they had a lot of confidence in Malik Willis, and oh, apparently, yeah. um, for good reason, because he played yeah. solidly again. Yeah, uh, I want to go back to at one point that you we were just talking about. I know Doc McKenzie. Uh, better than anybody, I think, other than his family. You can be cleared, but if the tight end go this way, it's going to limit you. Well, I don't, I'm not going to play. Mm -hmm. I want to play if I can do everything 100%. So you can be clear, okay, you, okay, but if you want him to turn and throw back across his body or do this or avoid a rush, right. he may can't do that. Well, don't play him. Right. So now on to Malik. Now, he, here's why, um, before I get uh, into Malik and how he played, it's one person just stays in my mind that won't leave my head, and that's Gutekunz. He's the one guy, Tom, to me, is doing a fantastic job. Now, he would never say any of the stuff I'm about to say, but he forecasted, I want a quarterback in the future. So he gets Jordan Love. And yes, I'm okay with um, having Clifford and Pratt, those guys through the training camp, I need something else if something else happens. Then you go out to get Malik, mm -hmm. in which Tennessee just gave up on the guy. That's yeah. just, you know, and that happens around the league. He didn't even take it personal. So he gets a quarterback, and now if you tell me a, a coach has to deal with the youngest team in, in the league with a backup quarterback and you go on the road, most people were telling me anybody can win at home when you manage the game. Fine. Believe that. But he went on the road to an environment that he was just at three, four weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And when, so to me, a lot of the credit has to go to Gutekunz and drafting these guys and trading for these guys that other people may not want, which is fine. But this game, you can circle and say, this was truly an amazing job by the GM. Well, part of the reason yeah. that puts him in an advantage, um, and it's his doing, is mm -hmm. that they've created an environment where a guy with Malik Willis's background, who hasn't been real successful, can come into a place 
and all of a sudden he's got all this talent exactly. around him. He's got yes. this offensive line that yes. will take care of him. Yes. He's got all these wide receivers. He's got a veteran running back. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, he's got everything. If he can't succeed in that environment, mm -hmm. then he's probably yes. not going to succeed at all. Yes. You know, if you had taken Tennessee's quarterback, Will Levis, and put him in that environment, he'd have played a lot better than he did Sunday. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you have to give Malik Willis credit that yes. um, in two weeks or three weeks that he's picked up the offense yes. and done everything that they've asked him to do, which is don't turn the ball over, make a yes. couple of plays, keep yes. the chains moving, and let the defense do its thing. So I was yeah. just so proud of, of just Malik as a, a per forget about the number two for me, as a person. I wish all quarterbacks would talk like that. Yeah, yeah, he just, is a humble guy. He's just yeah. a humble, blessed person, and he knows the opportunity sometimes comes around, right. and sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. But it's opportunity to win uh, games in the locker room. This I know they welcome him in. I'm gonna tell you, at the end of the, almost towards the end of the game, he threw like a swing out to Reed, and. And I'm paraphrasing because I don't know exactly what happened, but they were trying to explain why he threw it. Mm -hmm. So uh, Reed was like, you know, a little animated, get to the sideline, and then he talks to the coach, and he's just, you know, seeing what he saw. I said, welcome home. Because sometimes when they don't really like you, they won't even care about it. Mm -hmm. But it's the, the passion of it to your brother to where, oh no, we we expect perfection. Yeah. I I wherever I was, stand in ovation. Because that's what you want. You don't want to go to the media and say, what were y'all talking? And then he's no, we don't want to get into that. That's on the field. And I just appreciate the fact that you can have a discussion about a particular play. Remember yeah. when you told me about somebody in practice you liked because Bullard. Bullard. Yeah. yeah. I love that. It, love it, it. Um, shows that, to me, it shows that they have created this standard like, hey, this is a yes. Super Bowl team. Yes. Yeah. We can't get these things wrong. Yeah. You know, we, these are things I that love it, we can do. It. And I love you can see it. that. You can see I that when it. even the young guys are like that, are like, you know, hey, yeah. you know, we got to yeah. fix that. You know, yes. even you veteran can't do that. So, yeah, I'm sure that that's something they'll fix in a, in a meeting. Yeah. But Willis yeah. is not the kind of guy, it doesn't appear to be the type of guy. No, no. Nah. <laughs> he, um, he's handled this beautifully. Yeah. Now he's probably going to be handing the baton off to Jordan Love. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I can't imagine there's a scenario where he doesn't play this week other than, you know, something – Something happens and he doesn't quite feel right, you yeah. know. But I'm, don't you think? I mean, they were setting this up so that he'd come home and be at home and play against the Vikings when they. Really oh yeah, him. I mean, the Vikings arguably had the probably have a, after three games. Sam Donald's probably the MVP discussion because everybody thought he was a flop for three places he was at previous. They said he wasn't any good. Yeah. The guy's playing pretty good. Yeah. So, and they're, they're undefeated, and their defense, they blitz a lot. Yes. Okay. Yes. And, and I a wanted lot. to bring that up because um, if you remember when they, Packers had to go up to Minnesota last year, yep. you know, yep. and they needed that game to win, um, Flores brought all, you know, seven, yeah. eight guys to the line of scrimmage, and he yeah. made Jordan Love you know, guess who was coming. And they had a really good plan, mm -hmm. if you remember. I mean, he, mm -hmm. they blocked everybody up. He mm -hmm. hit some really um, nice passes yeah. down the field. And so this is a, a ultimate in a chess match because now, you know, um, he's going to come back this, this week, you know, Flores, and he's going to say, okay, you know, he figured out this now I got to come up with that, and then Lafleur's got to figure out. Okay, what's he going to throw at us this time, yeah. and how do we, how do we handle it? So, you know, I I don't know. Is the fact that Jordan Love hasn't played for two weeks, and now he's coming into this high pressure defense, is he going to be okay? I mean, is he's going to have a little bit of rust on him, right? Well, 
you don't normally don't get rust until you're 30 years old. He's still a young man. So, yeah. And that's what the practice was for. That, that last week of practice to get him into the groove. And now this week of practice, they're going to go through everything. And the chemistry that he has with his receivers are probably is better because he doesn't have a one guy that you can't get the ball to. Mm -hmm. Like the number one receiver you have to force it to. Right. Sometimes your chemistry can get off. But when everybody's on the same page, I think that he's going to want to get at it and throw it deep. Because I remember against Minnesota, he set the protection, and I think he hit uh, Jalen Reed down the middle, a post pattern. Yeah, yeah. And anytime you see cover two, safety split, please take the middle. And you may take a hit, but he stood in there and threw it. and just all arm talent. So he's going to... Maybe some balls will be too high, maybe be too yeah. low. But once he settles in, he'll be back, just like riding a bicycle. And I expect him. But I will say that the the penalties are starting to just kind of be a head scratch. Yeah, yeah, they sure yeah, are. Yeah, they, they sure are. They got to yeah. take them a little more seriously. Yes, you know? I talked to Sheed Walker the week before. Yeah, um, and about those penalties, and he was pretty nonchalant. Oh, they happen, you know, and I'll just have to learn from it. But then to come back and commit two more holding calls yeah. and a hands to the face, I mean, what do they do there? You know, how do, yeah. they, how do they solve that? Well, and there's other penalties. He's not the only one. Yeah, you know, There no. were some dumb penalties. How can they not line up yeah. um, correctly on uh, punt? Yeah, in, in legal... Uh, formation, the pre-snap penalties drive coaches wild. It really does. And one of the holding penalties, you know, all these things can be a judgment call, but when you get a lot of penalties, they're going to watch you. That's right. So you got to move your feet and get in front of the guy. But uh, if you're Josh Jacobs, it's like every big run he had, it was a holding penalty. Yeah. So I think what you have to do is address it more to players to get in position so you don't have to do something illegal. But as far as lining up, there's no excuse for that because that can really cost you a big play if you don't line up or if two guys are moving because there's a lot of movement in this offense, and that's the reason why it's been confusing defenses. Yeah. And I'm not um, – I don't think that um, – I'm not – making excuses for Preston yeah. Smith or, you know, he he had a bad offsides penalty. Yeah. But these guys are lining up and they are, they have fire breathing out of their nose. They're trying to get off yeah. on the snap and, and <laughs> yeah. because there's a lot yeah. of pressure on them to, yeah. um, to do well on a four man rush. Right. Yes. I don't know. You know, it did cost them a touchdown, but uh, you know, if that's, case and they wind up with eight, eight, eight sacks, snacks, you should oh, probably man. say, okay, we'll, we'll trade that for that. You know? Yeah, but it does drive the coaches crazy when they see certain penalties. But again, they got pressure on Will Levis up the middle. Because every time you step up, it's pressure. Yeah. And if you can get that kind of – and sometimes he did hold on to the ball, but it don't matter because remember – Jalen Hurts held, held onto the ball and they didn't get to him. Yeah. So it seemed like now, and that was, to be fair, if not the youngest offensive line or the second youngest offensive line, oh. but it's still an offensive line that that's what they put out there. You ex expect to get pressure, but I don't want anybody to, you know, one of you media guys, oh, y'all got eight sacks because it's a young line. No, they didn't have to work in the NFL. You get the sacks, especially the one-on-one -on -one sacks, you actually beat a guy. Yeah, yeah. You, that so, can be a veteran or a young guy. That's a big deal. We'll show that, too, yeah. that, you know, in some instances, they just had to work a double team and work it, yes. work it until they could get to the quarterback. Exactly. And and Jeff Halfley is not blitzing a lot. Mm. You know, he's counting on his four guys to get. And, and then you see, as we'll show on one of the sacks, the secondary is just blanketed with guys. You yeah. know, there's like nowhere yes. for that's why Levis was holding on to the ball sometimes because yep. there just wasn't exactly. anywhere to go. Yep. Yep. Um, so it's it works hand in hand. Now this will be a, a much bigger challenge covering Justin Jefferson and you know um, yeah. <laughs> they 
they just have a lot of talent. Aaron Jones will be uh, yep. is off to a really good start, and you know he's yep. going to be fired up to play at Lambeau Field. Yep. It's a it's a heck of a matchup, and uh, I don't know. I think the Packers are, are playing well, but I don't think they're the team they want to be in November oh, yeah. or December because no Jordan Love just isn't off. You know, hasn't gone off yet. He's, yes, he's still just starting the season now. And and the defense, um, it, it didn't have a great start, but when you're Jair Alexander and you get a pick six, it seemed like how he 23 plays, there's your swagger. Yeah. But the way 29 is playing, Xavier, that's the reason why against Gutekunz goes out and get the top safety that fits that fits for us. And he was in a deep middle and cave over got that interception. Yeah. But for Jair, you gotta believe what you see. Cause they'll always pump fake you. So you gotta believe what you see. Oh, this is it, and you gotta catch it. Yeah. And he caught it, scored, that set the tone. But there were areas every now and then that DeAndre Hopkins uh had a, a touchdown that, you know, Stokes gotta get him down. Yeah. But it seemed like it was a bend, don't break defense, and then they just took over. Yeah, and that's kind of how Halfley sells it is that, you know, they might give up yards, but they're going to get a sack. They're going to yes. get a tackle for loss. Yes. They're going to get an interception. They're going to do something to disrupt They people. had seven all last year. Yeah, and they had and seven that, I mean, think about that. And a, a pick six, you trade that all day. Do you think um, McKinney's interceptions, like the one Sunday – End of the game, doesn't really matter, didn't save the game, wasn't whatever. But it does sort of send a message that if you're going to throw the ball mm. deep, you know, you're going to have to contend with him, doesn't it? I mean, oh, yeah. Think as teams are watching, they're like, okay, we got to be cognizant of yes. McKinney because he can he can reach those deep balls. No way. He has amazing range. When you're playing the deep middle and you can still – help corners on either side and read the quarterback. And then when they bring him up, you know, he's still very effective. I mean, he's just a smart young player. And it's just so... He's a smart player, yeah. I, just, I get giddy watching the safeties, the way they play, because that's been missing. I mean, time we've done this excellent. Oh, my gosh. And we've drawn up a safety is over here. He wasn't supposed to. He bit on something he wasn't supposed to. Yeah, and dropped an interception. Open, and drop, you know, it's just it's a head scratcher. I think, I think um, what I liked about McKinney was I was talking to him after the game, and I was talking that subject about, you know, are you sending messages and stuff? And he's like, yeah. He's like, but, you know, there's still some things i got to clean up. You know, yeah. there's still things, um, you know, when I'm down in the box, i got to do better than I was. And I, I was like, you know, that takes something to, oh, yeah. you know, when everybody's, um, you know, throwing bouquets at you yeah. about you have three interceptions. Yeah. And he was, you know, like analyzing himself. Because you know, the enough. coach had pointed out with the little pointer in the meeting, Oh, yeah, you got a pick. Well, you see here, right. uh, your leverage guy has to be better. That makes you an all-pro player. Right. If it you really take does. that kind of coaching and you yes. see that kind of yes, stuff. Yes, because right. you're helping me. You're not picking on me and not degrading me. Help me become the player I want to be because that makes our secondary so much better. Another yeah. guy who's uh, coming into his own who you, you mentioned at mm -hmm. the beginning of the year was Kingsley Anikari. Man, I love 55. Love him, love him. The guy is smart. <laughs> He's a genius. He can read screens. And if he lose contain, he, he like, self-check. Like, Ugh! they'll come back and say, you know what I'm going to do this time? I'm going to cross him over yeah. and come underneath. Yeah. But I'll make sure I have contain first, and then I'm going to do it. And it's, it's just brilliant when you see a guy who hurt his knee, had he been there down the stretch, who knows? Because he reminds me of Keith McKenzie. Remember Keith came yeah, in he did. to just go after the quarterback, just come in on third down and just 
go but get a quarterback. He's a different type of yeah. player, though. He's a big, quick. strong, and got a 265 to 75. Got a quick burst step. <laughs> and it's really funny because he yes, tested. Yeah. Yeah. Really poorly at the combine. That's why he didn't uh, get so did I. very high. So did I. No, you didn't. You yeah, I did. Four, I read a blistering four six five. No, you did not. <laughs> he, um, he he ran like a four six five or something. And um, yeah. but he is a deceptive deceptive yes. player. And you're right. The move he made on that poor right tackle, uh, Petit Ferrer, that that guy fell down on his knees. He got. Kind of did the splits yeah, after yeah, yeah. anybody made that move on him. Uh, it, it's it's one impressive. of my favorite players, man. This guy's um, he got a lot of moves, man. Yeah. See, yeah. like ninety is a power guy, right? You know, Van Ness is a power guy, and has like the effort and everything you want as a veteran. He's a second year guy. He has that power to just slam into you and then just walk you back to the quarterback. The same with ninety five. 97, the interior guys, they just walk you back. So each guy has something. And they run games that were just confusing the offense a lot. Mm-hmm. And I, it was so great to see. Because even if you didn't get a sack, the double team slides to you, then your brother comes up and yeah. get that sack. And if, like you said, if you could do it with four people, the secondary and linebacker, they could just free flow. And it really helps the defense. Yeah. Yeah, so it'll be um, – they're facing a much better team. Oh, this yeah. Is, this yeah. is a team probably, yeah. you know, close to the same league as Philadelphia. And so yeah. they'll, they'll have to be at their best. But, um, you know, we still have to see whether the Vikings are, are for real. They, they get, they're playing so well defensively. Yeah. And that's, that's the part. They just dismantled yeah. Houston in yeah. a big way. I doubt so, that kind of shot. What do you think is the key to this? Okay. Confusion. They confuse CJ. They confuse and totally, which they did not confuse Joy Love last year. Right. But the the mirage of you got to figure out who's coming, and we'll tell you where we want you to throw the ball. We call it a funnel defense. It'll look like a guy's on an island, but really that guy's rolled up, and he can take some chances. And he has help deep, but the safety's in the middle of the field. So the quarterback has to set the protection, believe what he sees. Yeah. And then, but you can always do this defense by moving people. Move somebody every time. And you can kind of sniff them out. Because if they're blitzing and Jalen Reed is doing his normal yeah. going and back and going back and nobody's following him, oh, they're in some kind of zone. Yeah. I but if you see a guy leaning, okay. We can stick with it, guys. Stick with it. If yep. not, you can can it and do something else you like. Survive the down. Yeah, you're right. They're yeah. going to motion the heck out of them. And I yes. wonder if this will be a big, like, spread kind of a game where, mm-hmm. okay, instead of us compacting with tight ends and things, we're going to spread you out. Mm-hmm. And the most you can bring are mm-hmm. six guys. And if you bring six guys, we got one-on-ones on each side, and, yes. and we'll take advantage of that. So I, that'll be yeah. really interesting to see how it The thing about this, uh, real quick before we wrap, again, I, I keep saying this, but I'm going back to it again. The gold standard for me is Kyle Shanahan. The guy don't care who's the quarterback. He don't care who's the running back. He runs his stuff. That's what LaFleur is now. LaFleur is not only one of the best play callers now, and yes, I'm biased, but I can back it up. That first play of the game, everybody in the world, they're going to run the ball. They got through it 14 times. Yeah. He's not going to let him throw the ball a lot. This is a run. Jaden Reed wide open. And <clears throat> it just made me feel good that when we talk about play calling and putting in the work, shout out to the coaching staff. Because what they've done make me feel good. Because wherever I go around all 50 states, I got a play caller that his best quarterback wasn't playing for the last two weeks. And they ran their stuff. Yeah. They didn't try to overcomplicate it. And the same wristband that Jordan got, give it to Malik. He wants it. And that makes you feel good. Now, when you're at home against Minnesota, Minnesota's defended this 
uh, office before. As a matter of fact, they destroyed San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And San Francisco run the same thing. Right. But what they're going to do is take it to another level. And, and finally, the one thing that I feel I love the receivers, they didn't get a lot of catches and throws and targets. You didn't see them throwing over, kicking nets, mm-hmm. throwing the water down, thinking it's about me. They were blocking. That's so refreshing to see. That's and that's the orchestra that you want. No bands have an orchestra. And I was just so excited. That's why I feel good about my prediction. Okay. What is your prediction? Because if they continue to do, Josh Jacobs is going to get loose one of these games without the offensive line holding. Okay. But if you say to yourself, you scored 30 points, the youngest team or whatever, or the backup quarterback on the road, you would have told people that before, they would never believe it. So at home, Jordan comes back, I'm assuming, and I look for the Packers to win 30-17. to Wow, well, okay. Josh Very. Jacobs is going to have a game of his life, though. Okay. Very. But that Sam Donald, I'm defense. telling you now, because I don't want it to be like, I know y'all media people, because I've been working with you for 30 years, help, helping your career. I know you want to write about Jair and Jefferson, part three. Nah. Nah. It's about scoring 30 points. Because when you score 30 points, they ain't going to lose games. Okay. All right. So, well, all right. We'll hold you to that. And no, don't hold me to it. No, if they went if they, 28 points to 17, it's still a victory. Okay, Just no, win. but if they score 30 points and yes. lose, then you are. I better get the headline, Bill. Yes, exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yes. All right. Who do you got to thank? And then we'll head yeah. on to X's and O's. Yeah. First of all, pick and save. Go to pick and save slash Leroy Butler. You can get all my recipes. And again, go to LeroyButlerInc.com for all, anything where I'm, appearances and things of that nature, anywhere you download podcasts, look for the Leap 36 podcast, download it. Help me get to over 100,000 downloads. I think I need like 20 more thousand or something like that. We can do that from all your followers. Oh yeah. And the very last thing, if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting on? <laughs> it's the only way you can read this Pullers, what's that award? The Pulitzer Surprise Award, well, y'all win. Uh, yeah, Whatever it no, is, but, uh, we're going to whip you win there. Yeah. yeah. Don't be shy. Uh, but just go download packernews.com. All the information is right there. And it's very affordable, too. Yes, indeed. Please yeah. do that. And we will be uh, back next week after yes. the Viking game. Don't forget to check out it. Excellent. See you next week.